So what does it take to maintain a reef tank like this one behind me? It's actually my most frequently asked question on Instagram, so today we're going to find out. What's up reefers, my name is Tris and you are watching the Nano Tank Reefer YouTube channel. If you haven't already and you're enjoying the content, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Honestly, it helps me out no end. So today is Sunday. Sunday is the day that I do all the maintenance on my reef tanks. My 250 over here and also the nano tank that I've just recently set up. If you haven't seen the build series on that tank, I'll pop a link up here and also pop a link in the description as well. Don't get me wrong, I'll do the odd bit of maintenance in the week. I'll clean the glass, I'll do the odd phosphate test or nitrate test depending on how levels are sitting in the tank but the bulk of my maintenance is done in one hour every Sunday. Today we'll just be focusing on the 250 behind me and I'll go through step by step exactly what I do every week um, to maintain this reef tank. So first things first, we mix our salt. I actually mixed this overnight, so this is the night before. Um, I've got 3.15 kilos of Aquaforest reef salt. I chucked that in the brew container with 60 litres of water. 50 litres of the water is for the Red Sea Reefer 250 and 10 litres of the water is for the, the Nano Tank. Um, and that literally mixes for, well, it's about 10 o'clock at night, so until eight, nine o'clock in the morning. And this is the day after, absolutely clear. I, um, you don't really need to leave it mixing overnight, but it's just a, a habit that I've got into um, when, I was re when I was using the, uh, the old Red Sea uh, blue bucket, that took a long time to, um, to mix. Now we're getting the, um, the skimmer out. Uh, that is a week's worth of skim mate in there. Um, I actually do it every week because if I don't do it every week, sometimes when I do a water change, um, the skimmer overflows. And if I don't take that out of there and clean the skimmer, that is going back into the sump. That's why I clean the skimmer weekly. And to be fair, if I was to leave it every two weeks, um, it would probably be overflowing anyway. So weekly works well for me. One thing I do actually want to say is this is my weekly maintenance. This isn't my monthly maintenance where I switch out filter media. Um, I mean, I'd switch out the, the rower foss in the reactor. I also switch out the um, CO2 absorbing media, the super absorb that I use. Um, and also I top up the dosing containers monthly as well. This is just my weekly maintenance. Um, that's why it's, it only takes an hour a week for both tanks. Uh, once we've done the skimmer, that's gone back in there. We're going on to the reactor. Uh, the reactor I'm using is an Adnios torque reactor and it comes with a standard sponge. And I find if I use the standard sponge, it lets media go back into the, uh, the sump. So I actually clog that full of um, filter floss. Hence, I have to clean that every week. And you can see it's, um, it's pretty minging. First things first, you want to turn off the ATO. My ATO is down here, it's a plug. So I pull, make sure it's the right one, the ATO plug out. That just makes sure when you're taking water out of the tank, the, um, the auto top off doesn't start filling the tank up with fresh water. Skimmer off, then I turn my flow off. So the two wave makers are off. I keep the gyre on because that actually sits low enough for me not to have to turn it off. And then we turn the return pump off and also I will turn off the media reactor. The equipment I use, I use obviously a hose to siphon out the water. I take 50% from the top and 50% from the sump. So I take 25 litres from the top and 25 litres from the sump. To get it out of the sump, I use the CJ Ultra Zero, which is now dripping all over my floor, which is great. Um, so that is the equipment I use. I also use a spare 25 litre barrel. This is just for wastewater. This is one that I've marked specifically just for wastewater, so I know I'm not contaminating my fresh um, RO water with, uh, with used tank water. I'll move this up a little bit so you can see it coming out of the tank. Make sure I'm recording. There I am. So, 50% of the water, as I say, comes out the top. Start the siphon. I'm 
And I'll speed this up so you don't have to wait for the, uh, for the barrel to fill. Okay, so I actually forgot to lift the, um, the return nozzle out. So it's actually, the water's sitting a little bit lower than it normally does. So I'll actually take half a barrel out the top and then I'll take the rest out of the, um, the sump. Right, this pump, as you, this um, sump, as you can see, is absolutely tiny. So I usually move my reactor a bit over. I'll move it over here. Move the skimmer out of the way, move the reactor over, and then we've got just about enough room to get that um, ultra zero pump in there. And then we turn it on. So as you can see, it's going from the sump straight into the barrel, and I'll pull the plug just before we hit the top of this, um, this barrel. So there we go, 25 litres out, that's half the water change done. I'll rest that in the clara seat so it doesn't fall out, and I'll go empty this barrel. So that one's now empty. We'll do the same process again. Nozzle in there, and turn it on. The great thing about this pump is it sucks it from the bottom. Um, so I think it, I don't know how, how deep the water needs to be, but it pretty much sucks all of the, uh, the water out of this sump other than about half an inch that it leaves at the bottom, but we're okay because we don't need it to, um, to be that low because we've still got about three inches of water in there and we're pretty much at the 25 litre line. There we go. Pop that back in there. Move this barrel out of the way. And then I pull over my fresh salt mix that has been mixing overnight. It's the great thing about having laminate flooring. If this was carpet, there was absolutely no way I'd be able to slide this over and laminate flooring is a godsend. And to be honest, I'd never have a reef tank on carpet. I'd never have a reef tank on carpet anyway, just because I'm always spilling stuff on this floor. And it would be a nightmare. So, pull the pump out of my sump, into the barrel. And when I put the water in from the barrel into the sump, the fresh salt mix, I always put it straight through my clarity just in case there's any particles in there that I've um, that I've gotten in there through, I don't know, the salt mix or any, anything like that, any dirt really. And then we've got 50 litres of water going from the barrel straight into the sump. And when the sump gets to a certain level, we'll, um, Turn it back on. One thing I'll do actually is move the reactor and the skimmer back into its usual place. Right, so now we're at a good enough level where if I turn the return pump, pump back on, the uh, return pump won't run dry. So I'll switch that back on. Now make sure we don't also overflow the, uh, the sump as well. You see, it's going from the barrel into the sump, and then back into the tank. Move this back a bit. Now it's over, over the height of the, um, the wave makers. We can turn the wave makers back on. We're almost at the bottom of the barrel. So I'll get ready to unplug this. It's starting to come down the weir now. So we'll unplug that, pull it out.
Now we can turn the ATO back on. I have forgotten to turn the ATO on a few times in the past. So thankfully I'm in the routine of doing it now. Turn the reactor back on. And also turn the skimmer back on. And there we have it. 20% water change on the 250, done.